Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Extra Turns. We have a really fun one today. We've got Amy Amazonian, Kenji Numat the Nummy Egashira, and we have a brand new guest that's yeah. never been on our content before. It's said from One More Mana, which is a YouTube channel focused around Commander. Now, I know a lot of you are going to be like, only said because there's three yeah. guys yeah. on the One More Mana squad. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, Derek and Ken will be in the next episode of Extra Turns. So we got them all here, and they will all be on an episode eventually. Yeah, I'm so excited. It was so fun having those guys in the studio. They're a ton of fun. You should check out their content if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, also, you may be noticing that Extra Turns has a shiny new look. Yeah. A little vintage, a little uh, video games. Very fun. Yeah, I got a makeover. Uh, props yeah. to Murph and the team for uh, the new look. We'll, we'll be anxious to hear what you think, so definitely let us know in the comments. Of course, we, before we get started on the game, we got to talk about our sponsors. Cardkingdom.com slash command. That's the best place to go to get your magic products, singles, anything at all. It is the holiday season. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all know the best thing to get magic players for the holidays magic cards. is magic cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. My mom it's always crazy. asks what I want for Christmas. Like, magic cards. Yeah. Come. It's easy. Any of them. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, I never know what to buy. A box. <laughs> Just go to cardkingdom.com slash command and pick any box, any Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Mm -hmm. any, it's been, I mean, there's tons of product this year. So, Lord of the Rings, Doctor Who, all that stuff is in play. Uh, and, and the great thing about Card Kingdom is you want to know this time of year that when you order something, it's going to make it before the holidays actually begin. It's mm -hmm. the worst when you order stuff and you're like, it doesn't get there in time. And you're like, I promise I got you something. Hopefully it'll get there before New Year's. Card Kingdom, they're professionals. They get the stuff to the place that it's going when they say they're going to get it there. So you can have good peace of mind that you order something before the holidays. Card Kingdom's going to get it there in time. So again, cardkingdom.com slash command. And what's a good gift without wrapping? Go to ultrapro.com to pick up magic sleeves, deck boxes, play mats, all of the magic accessories that you need to keep your collection safe and organized and looking great. It's also another great gift for the holidays. Ultra Pro is, if you don't want to mess with cards, if you're like, oh, I don't know what, what cards they have and what cards they don't have, get them a cool deck box that matches their favorite deck. Get them the play mat that matches the deck they're building. There's always cool gifts available on Ultra Pro, and they're always high quality as well. We trust our collections with Ultra Pro, and I love keeping, uh, staying in touch with their website because they always have cool, like secret layer drops. When a new mm. secret layer comes out, they release a wave of playmats with some of the layers, and they're always amazing, and I'm always obsessed. But playmats, you know, they're at this point, my house is made largely of them. <laughs> 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 They're load-bearing playmats. I, uh, I like what you said of, there, though, yeah. because a lot of times somebody has a deck that you know they love, but mm -hmm. it's hard for you to buy a card for that deck because yeah. they know the deck better than you do. Yeah. But they maybe aren't going to splurge on the deck box, the playmats, and the sleeves that match that deck, yeah. and that's a really good gift for a Magic player if you know them pretty well. So, yeah, ultrapro.com slash command. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, the final way to support all of our content is directly if you go to patreon.com slash command zone. All kinds of cool perks for our patrons, including access to exclusive contents. After every single episode of Extra Turns, there's an episode of Turn Talk, which is only available to our patrons, and that is all the players sitting down directly after the game and kind of discussing from their perspective with each other mm. what happened, what the big decision points were, what they think maybe the mistakes they made are. I love in Turn Talk when you hear from somebody whose deck maybe didn't do as much in the game, and there's like, oh, I was really looking for this, or I think where things went wrong is I missed this land drop. Yeah. And really finding where things went wrong is almost as important as figuring out like what things went right for the for the deck who won so uh turn talks super fun again support the show at patreon.com slash command zone okay without any further ado let's get into this game Hello, hello! I mean, how's it? And welcome back to another episode, I almost forgot to say it, of Extra Turns! What's up, everybody? It's the Seiya Senpai from One More Mana. You can catch the One More Mana crew on YouTube as we're putting out content weekly on our podcast, as well as streaming over on Twitch. Hi, everybody. I'm Amy, or Amazonian. You might know me from my stream. I stream tons of Magic the Gathering Arena, and I also put stuff over on YouTube under the same name, Amazonian. But today, I'm here with the Command Zone crew for a little bit of Commander! Hey, friends. Kenji, new Mathanomi Egashira here. You Usually I'm playing Draft every weekday on Twitch, but today you'll find me playing some Commander. And there's no theme to this episode. We are just playing some of our favorite personal decks. So today I'm playing Giraffe Visionary Stitcher. This deck plays a lot of efficient creatures with huge butts. 
Then my commander can turn them into giant flying zombies. With a large airborne army backed up by blue staples, I'll control the skies and take over the game. And the deck I'm playing today is Ragaban, Nimble Pilferer. This deck is full of ways to cast my opponent's cards, including my pesky one-drop commander. But to make sure I can cast them all, I've got plenty of classic red treasure makers. With the glorious bounty of my opponent's best spells, this win should be in the bag. So my commander is a freaking boombox. It's Blaster, Combat DJ. This deck is all about stacking up on modular abilities. Because with the right pieces, I can double my 1-1 counters whenever I move them around. Then I can either cash in my huge artifact creatures for value, or just swing them in for the win. Today I'll be playing Torin's Fist of the Angels. This deck is full of cards that give me value when I cast creature spells. So as I deploy my hand, I'll be making tokens, drawing cards, and pumping the team with counters. Add in some big combat finishers, and we'll be throwing me a victory parade in no time. All right, let's fight. My fist, your face. I think it's safe to say, this game, it's gonna be a blast. Time for some serious monkey business. <laughs> All right, is everybody ready? Let's do it. Yeah, let's go. Start my turn, I'm going to draw first, and I'm gonna drop this island, and I'll pass turn. All right, fair magic, I like it. I will draw. I am gonna drop this game trail, and I will reveal a mountain for my hand so that it comes in untapped, and then I'll play Skull Clamp. Ooh. Go ahead. I'll draw my card for the turn. This is probably going to come as no surprise, but I'm going to play a mountain. I'm going to tap set mountain for my commander, Ragavan. Didn't think that was gonna happen. No, nope, not turn one. And I pass my turn. I'll draw for turn. I'll play Balagan Sanctuary tapped and say go. Start my turn, I'll draw. I'm gonna drop this island. And I think for my first trick, it has to be Mirror of the Forebearers. Ooh. Comes into play, I choose a creature type. It's gonna be zombie. Are you sure? I'm pretty <laughs> <laughs> You can choose Transformer. You can actually choose, robot, robot, sorry. Choose robots, yeah. <laughs> I'll pass the turn. All right, I will untap, I will draw. I feel like I need a blocker for that Regavan. I'll play a mountain and I'll tap two and play said blocker. It will be a copper mirror. He's Go just ahead. a little guy. He's just a little guy, like Regavan. I'll untap, draw, play a mountain. Go to combat, I see two defenseless yeah. players here. I forgot to defend. Oh, Unfortunately, they didn't also play blockers, yeah. It's my turn one still. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> see, there's one person here who knew the game plan. Ken, you're closest, so I'm going to swing at you for two damage. I'll take two, go to 38. All right, Ragman triggers. Please exile the top card of your deck. Ooh, a white main lion, and I'll grab my treasure as well. A beautiful treasure featuring your face. I appreciate that. Uh, you're welcome, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I will cast that white main lion using a mountain and sacrificing that treasure I just made. White Mane Lion comes into play under my control. Whenever it enters the battlefield, return a creature I control to its owner's hand. Oh, perfect. Ragavan returns to my hand. I'll then pay one red to replay Ragavan. That's the end of my turn. Value. Monkeys and cats. If I can play your card, I'm playing a card. <laughs> All right, I'll untap draw. I'm gonna play a Flames for a turn. And I'm gonna go with three visits. I'm gonna search my library for a forest card. I will find a Canopy Vista and put it onto the battlefield tapped. After that, I am done. Ooh, no blocks, huh? <laughs> Nothing's attacking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Feel so sorry for you. I'll draw. All right, I'll play a island for turn. I think it's time for a giraffe to come out here. I'll play three, and he's a one four, and uh, my zombies can fly whenever they show up. That's nice. Also, a blocker for Regavan. Yeah, four exactly. toughness, that's uh, hard for me to <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to stop that monkey in his tracks. <laughs> I'll pass the turn to you, Josh. All right, I will untap. I'll draw. All right, I will play a rockfall veil as my land for turn comes in untapped because I have two other lands. Boy, it's weird, I'll just pass the turn. Interesting. I'll untap and draw. I'll play a mountain for turn and there's still only one player here who's defenseless. So it looks like Kenji, I will be attacking you with both Ragavan and the White Mane Lion. Two damage from Ragavan and the White Mane Lion is also two. I have no effect, so I'm gonna take four. She's hitting you with your own creature, man. I'll go to 34. All right, after you take that damage, I get a treasure and please exile the top card of your library. A demolition field. I can't do anything with that demolition field. So it remains in exile forever. Perfect. And then I'll tap two mountains in order to cast 
Felwar Stone. This nice. is an artifact that can be tapped for mana. And now that I've got two mana, I'll use that. One red and one, let's say, green for Magda, Brazen Outlaw. Oh, cool. Kenji, your go. All right, untap, upkeep, and I'll draw. I'm gonna lead off with the planes. And I'm gonna play Nature's Lore, very similar to my previous turn. It's not a blocker. I'm gonna search my deck for another forest and put it on the battlefield. Play Temple Garden untapped, paying two life, going to 32. With my three mana, I might play a creature finally. Don't you dare. Yeah, I'm gonna play Torin's Fist of the Angels. It barely counts as a blocker, because you're not gonna block with it. <laughs> that blocks a 2-1 really well. <laughs> Take out Ragavan. <laughs> After that, I am done. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna untap. I'll draw for turn. I'll play an island for the turn. I think I'm going to pay three for Commander Spear. Nice. I uh, think I want to play Sleight of Hand. Okay. Uh, look at the top two cards in my library, put one to my hand, and all others on the bottom of my library. I still need a blocker, so I'm just going to have to pass the turn. All right, on your end step, I'm gonna pay three, and I will play Liberator. Urza's Battle Thopter. It's got Urza's face on it. Yeah, yeah. It's a... It's a weird... No, that's not a yeah. face. <laughs> anyway, untap. <laughs> and I'll draw... Well, I suppose I'll play a Stomping Ground, which I will pay two life for, and go to 38. And then, because I can cast things at flash speed, I guess I will just pass the turn to you, Amy. Time for some big old untaps. Draw. I'll play a Mountain for turn. And I see that I have six mana right now. And I'm too. going to see if I can get a little bit more. Kenji, I will say that even though you have a blocker, you're still the most defenseless player here. And I'm going to attack you with Magda, White Mane Lion, and Ragavan. <laughs> when I declare Magda as an attacker, I get another treasure! Do you see my life total right now? What are you doing to me? Uh, we start with 40 life. You have plenty to give. <sighs> you can block. You it's definitely only can. two damage. I'll declare no blocks and potentially take six. Six damage going through. All right, I go to 26. When that damage is dealt, please exile the top card of your library. I'll get another treasure. What is this, wood elf? Ha, sucker. I don't have forests in my deck. I don't want that. Put that away. Okay, that'll stay in exile. And I'll use all of this lovely mana I have, paying one, two, three, four, five, and sacrificing this treasure. For Itali, Primal Storm. Oh, that's awesome. This is great. I'm it's having like, a good time, yes. It's like three Ragavans stapled together in a dinosaur costume. That's Wait, what? It's my turn. <laughs> it's nothing like that. <laughs> it's exactly like that. <laughs> All right, I will uh, slightly cry and then untap and draw. I'm gonna say right now I don't have a single piece of removal. Yeah, just can you so guys you do something, know. please? I'm green. I lights. put up blockers. This is your fault for not well, blocking that's all for my three fault. turns. <laughs> Guys, let's not fight amongst ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got plays, I got plays, I got plans. I'll start off by forest. I know you guys like that. Yep. The removal color. Yes. Big fan of the good, good green stuff. Yeah. And then I'm gonna tap three and play Rishgar Pima Renegade. Nice. When I cast that, I'm gonna make a 1-1 human with training. And then Rishgar will enter the battlefield and I'll put a 1-1 counter on both Torrens and the human soldier. But wait, there's more. Torrens can now tap for a green with Rishkar's ability, so I'm gonna play Serith, the Viper's Fang. Oh, that's sweet. Torrens will trigger again, giving me another 1-1 one, one human soldier. How's that for blockers? Everybody happy now? All right, okay, I'm done with my turn. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a little late. I'm gonna untap, I'm gonna draw. Okay, this is getting scary, so I... I have to just hope that Josh has an answer because I'm just gonna tap two. <laughs> I told you, literally <laughs> said, I literally said I have no removal spells. <laughs> I'm just gonna tap two and uh, play an Alfetto Alchemist. Oh, that's scary. Unfortunately, I'm just gonna have to, like I said, pass the turn and hope that Josh has something. It's a foolish hope. All right, on your end step, I will tap two and I'm going to cast a Plague Mirror. That is a two CMC artifact, so Liberator will get a plus one, plus one counter. And then, still in your end step, I'm going to tap three, and I'm going to play the more than meets the eye side of my commander, which is called Blaster Morale Booster. Cool. And I paid three mana for that spell, so Liberator will get a second plus one, plus one counter. And of course, Blaster comes in with three counters on it. I have a response before sure. we start the turn. Yep. Uh, I'm going to tap three, and I'm going to play this instant Dequay Gambit. I'm gonna target three creatures. If you choose to keep that creature on the battlefield, I get to draw a card. Got it. Uh, I'm gonna choose the Liberator. Yep. I'm going to choose a Tali. Duh. Uh -huh. Duh. Uh, you get a choice. I'm gonna choose a Seraph. Draw a card or my Liberator. 
All right, you can draw off me. You can draw. Oh, we just saw it coming. <laughs> yeah, you're drawing for me too. Just, all right, just cool. take them all. All right, and I'll go ahead and draw my three cards. One, two, three. Yeah, so I have seven cards in hand, so I'll go ahead and finish passing my turn. All right, uh, nicely played. I will untap, I will draw. I will play a Buried Ruin as my land for turn. I'll pass the turn. What? I suppose you can cast things at instant speed, so it makes sense. Time to untap all my permanents, and I go to draw. I'll move to combat, and I'm a big fan of attacking with everything. So I'll be attacking with everything, even though there are some good blockers on the battlefield. I'll be attacking with Atali at you, Kenji, and I'll be attacking with Ragavan, White Lane Lion, and Magda at Josh. Yep. So when I declare attackers, I get two triggers, one from Magda, one from Atali, so I'll get a treasure. And now would everybody please exile the top card of their library? All right, so let's all reveal. I got an Inventor's Fair. I have a Shield Spear. I got a Skull Clamp. And I have a Mind Stone. Skull Clamp? Wow, three cards and an artifact carrying card. That's weird. <laughs> well, I can't do anything with the land, but I suppose I can cast everything else. So I will cast the Mind Stone. I will cast the Skull Clamp. Yep. And I'll cast the Shield Spear. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And I'll exile the Inventor's Fair. Uh, before blocks, I am going to tap four, and I'm going to play Hangerback Walker for X is equal to two. And that will trigger Liberator, so it becomes a four five. And then I'm going to tap three, and I'm going to play a Workshop Assistant. This is significantly more game actions than I expected during combat. <laughs> All right, and then we'll go to blocks. I'm gonna block Ragavan with the workshop assistant, Magda with the hangerback walker. And I'll block the white brain lion with Liberator. I've been a punching bag this whole time, so I'm just gonna say I'll take six from Atali. So I'm not gonna block. And I'll go to 20. You have tokens. You know what, they're, they're very important to me. Just leave them alone. That's scary. All right, so hangerback dies, workshop assistant dies, and then all three of yours die? My creatures are all going to the graveyard. I guess one is technically Kenji's. Oh yeah, so it will go to your graveyard. Yep. My workshop assistant, when it dies, will bring the hanger back walker back to my hand. And I'll choose to put Ragavan back into the command zone. And when the hanger back walker dies, because I had two counters, I will get two thumb thumbs. Okay, I've got all of this mana. It would be a shame not to do something with it. So I'll pay one, two, three, four, five, six for Oblivion Sower. Nice. Oh, is it gonna count my Inventor's Fair that I just exiled? It I sure it does. does. Yeah. So, so I I Josh, I'm in. going to target you. Please exile the top four cards of your library and I'll take all of the lands that happen to be exiled and put them under my control. Dang, that's pretty cool. Or would be cool if it was happening to somebody else and not me. <laughs> my four cards are, ah, jeez. Yeah, I'll take the lands. Okay, so you're gonna get an Inventor's Fair, a Wooded Foothills, and a Gruel Turf. That's pretty good. Okay, so those three lands will enter the battlefield under my control, and a Gruel Turf enters tapped. And now I have to put a land back into my hand, so I'll choose to bring my mountain back into hand. And interestingly enough, I have not gotten to play a land per turn, so we're going to bring that mountain straight back into play. It's like an untapped one of your lands. Wow. It's great. That's the best bounce land I've ever seen. And then I will sacrifice your wooded foothills. Come on. Search my library for a mountain, and I'll take one going down to 39. I'll put it on the battlefield, and then I cast, tapping the Inventor's Fair in this mountain for Goblin Engineer. When that enters the battlefield, I get to search my library for any artifact card and put it in my graveyard. I'm going to choose Hammer of Perforos, and I might be able to get that back later. It might say it on the card that you can get it back. But only if it costs less than four, which it does. <laughs> and that's the end of my turn. All right, I'll untap and draw. Alrighty, I'm gonna play Force for a turn, and then I'm going to pay an absorbent amount of mana. I'm gonna pay nine for Green Sun Zenith. Oh! <laughs> Okay. Now I'm gonna find with that Green Sun Zenith, Crater Hoof Behemoth. An eight mana creature uh, in a token stack? Crater Hoof Behemoth? I'm never not Never saw it coming, <laughs> never saw it coming. Also still don't like it. Yeah. Boo this, boo this man. What is that, 16, 24, 35 total damage? And with uh, Death Touch when they become tapped. For, yeah, well. Oh my gosh, with the trample. Mm. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> it's gonna hurt really bad. All right, I'm gonna move to combat. I think I'm gonna have to uh, attack the person that's been attacking me this entire time. So Amy, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna declare attackers on you. It's not my fault you have the most exquisitely stealable cards. <laughs> Amy, I'm going to attack you with these three creatures. On attacks, my training token will train and get a plus one, plus one counter. How much damage is that? 
We have an 8-8, eight, eight, an 8-8, eight, eight, and an 11-11. That's a lot of damage. Trample Death Touch. Trample Death Touch. Uh... So with Trample and Death Touch, uh, the creature only needs to ever assign one point of damage to be considered lethal, so any excess damage beyond that one is going to trample over to the player. I'm really glad I wasn't attacking him this whole time. Right. <laughs> well, I got that Shield Spear for free, so it's going to be my one dedicated blocker here. Shield Spear, I'd like you to block the Praetor Hoof Behemoth to absorb a grand total of one damage. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. <laughs> so technically on block, the Shield Spear gets a minus zero, minus one counter, which is a thing, I guess. But it doesn't really matter because it's only able to absorb one damage. Okay, so... I'll take 26 damage to the face. <laughs> And go to 13 life. <laughs> so you've taken 26, and I'm taking a big hit of dopamine, so that's better now. <laughs> Do you feel avenged? I feel better, yeah. at least. I mean, I might die next turn, but that's okay. Yeah, you don't, well, you left one blocker out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're totally safe. And uh, with that, I will end my turn. All right, I'm going to untap, draw. All right, I'm going to do something weird. By weird, I mean just play magic. Uh, I'm going to pay two, uh, and then I'm going to cast Renegade Doppelganger. Ooh. And then I'm going to pay two for a wall of junk. Okay. <laughs> a what of what? A wall of junk. I didn't realize it was a defender deck. I thought it was going to be a zombie deck, and it's like he totally, yeah, he head faked me. So even though I cast Wall of Junk, I'm not gonna have Renegade Doppelganger become a copy of it. Uh, it can just stay, you know, stay as is. There's a lot of junk in that trunk. <laughs> She's been holding that all this whole time I've been talking. She's like, shut up, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> shut I'm up. trying to I be polite. I got yeah. a fat ass joke to draw. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna keep my one mana up and I'm gonna pass the turn. It's two mana, don't lie to us. I'm gonna keep my one, maybe two mana up and pass the turn. <laughs> all right, I will untap, draw for turn. Uh, all right, well, I'll go looking for answers. I'm gonna pay one, and I'm going to attach a skull clamp to one of these thopters. It will immediately die. Poor thopter. I will draw two. All right, I'm gonna play a forest. I'll put these guys up here so I don't forget that they're creatures. Then I'm gonna tap three, and I'm gonna play Branching Evolution. Pretty good. Um, don't look at me like that. I'm not, I'm just okay. like, <laughs> I'm sorry if you die, Kenji. Go away, me. <laughs> Okay, focus, we just gotta find the right line. Okay, yeah, so if I play Scorpion Strike, then you can boost with Vengeance of Stone. Or I could play Incredible Strength and I could save Vengeance to discard later. Yes. This is not magic. What are you guys playing? <laughs> this is Kinfire Delve Vainglory's Grotto. It's a tactical card game where you play as adventurers descending into a dangerous lair. You use your unique skill cards to conquer challenges and reach the final boss. Yeah, it's super easy to learn, but you have to play smart to win. You gotta think about sequencing, resource management, threat assessment. It really uses a lot of your skills for magic. Yeah, the entire box is only 20 bucks, and we've gotten a lot out of it. it. Takes about an hour to play, and each game is different than the last. Ooh, and look at the cards. Yeah, the art is really sweet, and check out that foiling on the back. Right now you can play with one or two people, but that's going up to four next year with an expansion. It's really perfect for a commander pod, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Nice, so why doesn't Jimmy just play Coup de Gras? What? Oh yeah, that's way better. Wait a minute, how did- Reading the card explains the card. <laughs> Order Kinfire Delve Vainglory's Grotto right now at kinfiredelve.com and use code COMMAND10 at checkout for 10% off. Again, that's kinfiredelve.com with code COMMAND10 or find it at your local game store starting November 21st. Kinfire Delve Vainglory's Grotto. It's a whole lot of game for just 20 bucks. Greetings, furballs. I am Nizan, revered bladesmith. As a cat, I care deeply about my grooming, especially trimming my body hair. Now I'm used to making blades that cut through skin, so when I tried making my own razor, it did not go well. Then I turned to Manscaped, the only brand I trust for putting blades near my sensitive pod. They sent me the Performance Package 5.0, and my fur has never looked finer. Their new body hair trimmer features two interchangeable next-gen skin-safe blade heads. Plus, it has dual LED spotlights, three length-setting combs, and it's even waterproof! Though being a cat, I'm not going anywhere near water. Yes. This package also comes with the Weed Whacker 2.0 for those pesky ear and nose whiskers. With proper grooming from Manscaped, you too can be the cat's meow. And I should know, I'm the cat meow. Get 20% off plus free shipping with code command at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with code command at manscaped.com. I can promise you've never seen a trimmer that looked like a spaceship, so get yours today from the folks at Manscaped. All right, my new deck list is complete. Now, let's see which cards I don't already own and buy them. Wait. 
How'd you do that without going through a million boxes? Oh, I just use Architect. They make it super easy to upload and manage your collection. Then when you're done brewing a deck, you can sort it by collection status to see what you already have. So this group is just cards you don't own? Yep, I just click buy this stack and it takes me right to Card Kingdom. Whoa. Architect is the best place to browse, brew, and playtest commander decks. Just go to architect.com slash command zone to get started. That's A-R-C-H-I-D-E-K-T dot com slash command zone. I'll untap on my upkeep. Inventor's Fair will trigger because I have three or more artifacts and I'll gain one life. Going to 14. And I'll draw for turn. I feel like my treasures don't tap for nearly enough mana. And I also don't feel like I have enough flyers on the battlefield. So I'm going to pay five Gold mana span. for Goldspan Dragon. How does the mono red deck it consistently have rampant. the most mana this whole game? Yeah. We're I two green. Yeah, it's, it's impressive. <laughs> I've got even more mana to spare, so I'm going to use my Gruel Turp and Inventor's Fair for Captain Lannery Storm. Nice. Oh boy. Hasty. At some point, she'll run out of cars to play. <laughs> I think we might be dead at that point. Though. <laughs> so that's the fun thing. I won't, because I'm also going to pay one, two, three, four, sacrificing one of these treasures. Four, Experimental Frenzy. Oh. I may look at the top card of my oh, library. Nice. I can play those cards, but I can't play cards from my hand. How many cards do you have in your hand? One, and because I sacrificed a treasure, Captain Lunary Storm will get one additional power. Okay, I'll use Experimental Frenzy to look at the top card of my library. And I'm going to sacrifice both of these treasures to vote four red mana. And he really only has one speed. <laughs> <laughs> Just all, everything, all the time. Captain Lannery Storm is going to get two more power, making her into a five power creature. Okay. And I'm going to use that mana to cast Boundary Inspector from the top of my deck. Oh, nice. Now you might remember I still have one extra mana and I think it's time to make that Goldspan Dragon a bit mightier. So I'm going to give it that Skull Clamp. I'll look at the top card of my deck. There's a mountain on top of my deck, so I'm going to play that too. Okay. And I'll look at the next one. And I think it's time to go to combat. Kenji, why'd you hit me with a Crater Hoof Behemoth? Why'd I you? think you very well know why. <laughs> well, I'm going to get revenge. I'm going to exact vengeance. Yeah. Stay back and just <laughs> be quiet over there, yeah. Kenji, I'm going to attack you with Lannery Storm, Oblivion Sower, Atali, and Goldspan Dragon. Goblin Engineer gets to stay back. I've got a bunch of attack triggers. I'm going to start with the Goldspan Dragon and Lannery Storm getting two treasures. And now everybody, please exile the top card of your library to see if I can cast it. I got a forest. I got a tails in. And I got an aura shards. And I have a star storm. Of those, the only card I'm going to cast is aura shards. So everything else can go and remain in exile. Okay. Thank you so much for that aura shards. I can't wait to destroy artifacts and enchantments. Nice. Man. Oh wait, I... all your creatures are artifacts. Yeah, my, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an artifact tech, yes. I genuinely forgot. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like, that literally kills every permanent I have that's not a land. <laughs> now the top card of my library has changed. I'm gonna take a peek, put it right back. Uh, can I go to Wux? All right, I'm gonna put Serith underneath the Atali. Everything else goes through? Yeah. You'll take 15 damage. All right, I'll go from 20 to five. And goodbye, Serith. No more death touch for you. All right, so Serith's gonna die. And we didn't even take out the Atali on that attack. That sucks. <laughs> Look at that board. It's great. Nothing but haymakers on that side of the table. Yeah. And I pass the turn. I'll untap all my things and draw. I'm going to pay three and play the Growing Rites of Itlamok. Nice. Ooh, budget guy's cradle. I will look at the top four cards of my library and may put a creature from among them in my hand. Oh yeah, it does that too, I always forget. Uh, I will opt not to put a creature from among them into my hand. <clears throat> and I will put the rest on the bottom of my library. Hmm. hmm. That's what we call a, a whiff. Uh, I guess I will then play a Plains for the turn. I will tap three for Eternal Witness, and I will target back my Serith the Viper's Fang. Pretty good. <laughs> I conveniently have four mana, so I will tap four, play Serith back out. Hi, Serith. And that was two creatures, so I'm gonna make two soldiers with training. Well, I guess in an attempt for one last hurrah, I am going to declare attackers at Amy. Jeez. All right, Amy, I'm gonna swing at you with both Crater Hoof Behemoth and Torrens, and Torrens is gonna trigger the training. Well, I've got two blockers, so I may as well block. I will block with the Goblin Engineer and the Foundry Inspector, respectively. I have no cards in my hand, no effects. Damage? Before damage, I'm actually going to sacrifice one of these treasures. Float two red mana. I'll tap the Goblin Engineer and sacrifice an artifact, being the Foundry Inspector. That goes to the graveyard, and I'm going to get the Hammer of Perforos out. Now that I've got another one mana floating, I'm going to sacrifice the other treasure. 
in order to sacrifice one of my lands using Hammer of Perforos. Goodbye, Mountain. And I'm going to get a 3-3 Golem onto the battlefield. That Golem entering into the battlefield actually triggers the Aura Shards, which I got from your deck, and I may as well use it to destroy Liberator. Mm. Womp womp. Not Liberace. I don't like that. Nobody does. All right, in response, I will tap four and I will play, surprise, surprise, a hanger back walker for X is equal to two. That'll come in with four counters because of branching evolution. And then Aura Shard's ability will resolve and Liberator will be destroyed. All right, damage resolves, the goblin engineer dies. And then I guess that's the end of my turn. So since I have more than four creatures, the growing rights of Itlamok is going to transform. And with that, I will say go. All right, before the end of your turn, I'm going to tap this Commander Spear for one blue. Uh, I'm going to tap Jorof. Let's sacrifice the Wall of Jump. And I'm going to put a 7-7 seven, seven Flying Zombie into play. Jeez. So I'm going to untap and start my turn. Let's see. So 14 will kill you. 5 will kill you. That is accurate. That is accurate. Would you 30, like 38 to kill? will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> would you like right. to kill half the players at the table? I think I would. Can you kill both of them? I think I can. Holy snap. I'm going to pay three. I'm going to play a hover barrier. Uh, Renegade Doppelganger will not become a copy of this defender. Okay. However, I am going to pay a blue to tap Giroff and have that hover barrier become a 6-6 six, six flying zombie. Oh, I get what's going on here. Okay, so you make a 6-6 six, six zombo. Yes. And then, are you going to doppelgang this one? Yes, this one's going to become a copy of the 6-6 six, six flyer. Double dang it. <laughs> Famous last words. I just love how Amy preloads the jokes. She's got them ready. This is great. Do you know how hard it is for me to not be doing puns all the time? I try to reduce the cross talk. Okay. All right, so I think I'm going to move to combat. I'll use my last remaining uh, blue mana to have Mirror of the Forebears become a copy of my 7-7 seven, seven flying zombie. And I think it's time to eliminate some players. Oh, wow. Mm. So I'm going to send exactly 14 over at Amy. I'm going to send exactly six coming at you, Kenji. All flying? All flying. Any reach? No flyers, no reach. No cards in hand? No cards in hand. Oh, we getting in there. Okay. <laughs> Any effects? So no blocks? No blocks. Yep. 14 at Amy, six at you, Kenji. We die! We're dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to pass the turn to you, Josh. Okay, I will untap. I will draw my card for turn. All right, I'm going to start by tapping the Copper Mirror for mana and clamping it. That will make it die. And I will draw two. And then I'm going to pay three, tap uh, my commander to remove three counters. And then I will put those counters onto the Hangerback Walker. Mm -hmm. But because of branching evolution, that'll actually be six counters. It'll end up with 10. Uh, and because Blaster now has no counters on it, it will transform into its combat DJ side. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm gonna go to combat said, and I'm gonna swing at you with the Plague Mirror and the Hanger Back Walker. All right, so I'm gonna move to blocks. I'm going to just put my 6-6 six, six Flying Zombie in front of the Plague Mirror. Okay. Because I'm more scared of infect than damage. Before damage, I'll tap three, and I'm gonna beast within my Hanger Back Walker. Whoa. Whoa. So the Hanger Back Walker will die. I will make a 3-3 three, three and 10 Thopters. Yep. Because it has modular, I'll put its 10 counters onto the Plague Mirror, which is actually 20 counters because of branching evolution. So it's a 21-21 infect. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I'm not taking damage, but uh, the zombie does go away to the graveyard. And technically, it was already in the graveyard. It's undead. <laughs> He's just going back. Going home, going home. Aww. <laughs> the old dusty trail. Okay. All right, Sed, that's all I can do. Go for it. I'm going to untap my things, and I'll draw for the turn. I'm going to play a my fifth island for the game. Okay. All right, so you have 10 colorless flyers. 11, yeah. 11 colorless flyers. I'm not going to be able to get through. My flying plan is backfiring. So I'm going to pay six, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to play Kaiga, the TIE star. Oh, wow. OK, yep. When it that enters works. the battlefield, Renegade Doppelganger is going to see it. Uh, legendary rule, state base effect. Uh, the original Kaiga is going to die. You're going to take my 2121. I'm taking a 2121. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So you have a 20, actually, it's a 2222. Wait, how would that be possible? It's a 2121. But 20 counters. Right. Boy, that took all my counters is the worst part about that. Yeah, so we're gonna move the combat. Yep. 
I'm swinging my 5-5 five, five Kaiga and my 7-7 seven, seven Flying Zombie. A 12? Yes. See, it's complicated because all my chump blockers represent two cards. And I like cards. And I don't really need the life that badly. Yeah, I think I don't block. Take 12. Take 12. Go to 26. All right, so moving to my second main. Yep. I'm going to tap Alfetto Alchemist. Going to untap Commander Spear. I'm going to pay a blue. Uh, sacrifice my Kaiga the Tide Star. Going to have your commander come join my side. Sure. Crime, 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 <laughs> crime, crime. Oh, I also get a 5-5 five, five zombie. You were just thinking about killing the thing. I was just trying to get that guy out of here, yeah. Pretty good. It was all part of the plan. Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna pass turn, because my head hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. All right, time to untap everything, and, and I'll draw my card for the turn. Okay, let's start by clamping one of my thopters. Drawing two. Hmm. I'll clamp a second thopter. Draw two. That means I have nine left. Yep. And then I will clamp another one. Draw two. Oh Those boy. poor thopters. What did they ever do to deserve this? I'll play my land for turn, which is a forest. I'll use it to clamp another thopter. I will draw two more cards. All right, well, I'll play a soul ring. Late game soul ring. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Kenji's not impressed. Yeah. You just increased your <laughs> available fine. mana. Yep. It's like a ritual. Uh, yep, I will clamp. Two more times? Well, one more. Let's see what happens. I'm floating one. Hmm. All right, with the last floating, I will clamp one more time. <gasps> Draw two more. Great thought, your massacre. They all put on Punish. the same hat. Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> Where were you when the thofters died? Uh, and then I'm going to tap two, my last two mana, and I'm going to channel Buseju. I hate Buseju. Targeting my commander, so I have at least the hope of turning my deck back on. I'm out of mana, so I cannot respond to that. All right, you get to go find a land. A land with a basic type. Cool. Then I will discard a Great Henge, Liquid Metal Torque, two lands. I don't know, a bunch of other <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I, I named the ones that matter. <laughs> All right, I'm goes to the graveyard, and that was just an eventful turn. The perfect kind of turn. Draw a bunch of cards, destroy one thing, go. I will untap. Yeah, I will draw. All right, I will play a... Island for turn. I'm going to tap the commander spear for blue mana because okay. I'm a smart magic player. Like an adult, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to sacrifice it to draw a card. Please don't be Cyclonic Rift. I think, yeah, I think it's combat time. First, I'm going to pay one and I'm going to turn Mirror of the Forebears into a copy of my 7-7 seven, seven flyer. Yeah, I'm just going to swing with the team. Yep. Um, I'll keep a couple back. Of course, my uh, commander in Alfetto. Okay. So I'm gonna be swinging with the Plague Mirror, my 7-7 seven, seven Flyer, my other 7-7 seven, seven Flyer, and my 5-5 five, five Flyer. All right, and I'm gonna go, I'll block the Beast on the Plague Mirror, and I'll block both the 7-7s, seven, I guess. I'll keep three Thopters out of combat. Oh. I'm at 26, I can oh. take a little. <laughs> yeah, I'll block the big ones. Okay. So I'll leave the 5-5 five, five flyer unblocked. Yeah, no response. Uh, all my stuff dies and all your stuff lives. Then I take five. Uh, let's see, I currently have two artifacts. So I can pay one to cast out uh, Emery. Yep. Uh, when Emery enters, I'm gonna mill the top four cards in my library and put them into my graveyard. Cool. Uh, okay, glad to get those out of the way. And I have more manas. You got lots of manas. I have three here, so I'm going to tap three and I'll play a late game Rhystic Study. Wow. And I'll pass turn. I will untap all this stuff. I will draw, play Ancient Tomb as my land for a turn. Okay, I'm gonna pay five, taking two from Ancient Tomb, going to 19, and I am going to recast the more than meets the eye side of my commander. So it comes in with three counters on it. You wanna pay one for that? <laughs> Let me think about it. <laughs> no, you can draw. Oh. Then I'm going to pay three, and I'm gonna cast Scrap Trawler. Oh, would you like to pay one for this? Yeah, one? I'm thinking about that. Okay. Nope, I can't. I will not pay for Rhystic Study. So, all right, then I'm gonna pay two. I'm gonna play an Arcbound Slith. You can draw for Rhystic Study. It has modular one, but because of branching evolution, it'll come in with two counters. And then I'm gonna pay one, I'm gonna play the Ozolith. Oh. And you can draw again. All right, let's see if I can live. Go ahead, Sad. So before the end of your turn, I'm yep. going to tap one. Yep. Uh, tap my commander. Yep. Sacrifice a plague mirror. This is chunky boy over here. And make a 21 21 flying zombie. Yep. I'll take my plague mirror back. Thank you very much. <laughs> Untap, upkeep, draw. All right. I'll play an island this turn. Sure. 
Uh, I'm going to pay three for Sword of Feast and Famine. Uh, yep. I'm going to pay two to equip it to my... Let's put it on Emery. Interesting, okay. And then uh, I'm going to pay one. I will have Mirror of the Forebearers become a copy of my 2121 Flying Zombie. All right, I'm moving to combat. Yeah. So we are going to swing in for 21 here. Who's yeah. this we? 21 here. The royal we. The, the, the team. <laughs> and these are my attackers. So everything's flying except for that Emery? Correct. Well, that makes things easy-ish. Block the two 21 21s, of course, because they'll kill me. And then I'll block Emery with my scrap trawler. All right, so 12 is getting through? Correct. All my stuff dies. 12 gets through. I go to seven, and I have a scrap trawler trigger. It will get back my hanger back walker to my hand. So that's it for my turn, so I'll pass it over to you. Okay, well, I will untap all my stuff here. I will draw. Um, okay, I am going to tap for three with my ancient tomb, going to five. I don't like this. I'm going to activate blaster. Taking the three counters off, they become six because of branching evolution, so the Arcbound Slith now has eight counters on it. Blaster will then transform to its basketball playing side, its LeBron side. Then I'm going to tap four, including two green, and I'm gonna cast Greater Good. Ristic Study Trigger? Uh, Ristic Study Trigger. I am gonna pay for Ristic Study. <gasps> oh, okay. Then I'm gonna pay two, and I'm gonna cast my hanger back walker for X is equal to one. Pay one for that. I will pay for that. So one, but it has modular one from blaster. That actually becomes four counters because of branching evolution. Yep. All right, now I'm going to sacrifice my arc bound slith to greater good. Uh, uh oh. So those eight counters go on Ozolith, but I have two modular triggers which is 16 counters going on to Hangerback Walker, which is actually 32 counters because of branching evolution. Mm -hmm. We'll end up with 36 counters. Cool. Uh, then I also get to draw eight and discard three because of the greater good, let us not forget. How do we get here? Okay, I'll discard a Mountain and Urza's Saga and a Fury Storm, which is impossible to cast. All right, then I will go to combat. At the beginning of combat, Ozolith will trigger. I'll take its eight counters and put them on a Hanger Backwalker, which is actually 16, 16 counters because of Branching Evolution. So it ends up with 52 counters. Yep. And then I will sacrifice my 52, 52 Hanger Back Walker to Greater Good. That'll put 52 counters on the Ozolith. It also has modular, so I'll put 50, sorry, 104 counters onto this Thopter. And then I will draw 52 cards and <sighs> discard three. And I will make 52 Thopters. So I will discard two mountains and an anger. Oh my goodness. And then we will continue to declare attackers and I will Swing at you with a 105, 105, and 52, one ones. I will at least put up a fight and untap my 21 to block that 104. Yep. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I'll take a 52 to the face. Oh, ow, 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 ow. I'm uh, losing count. Um. <laughs> uh, good game, everybody. Good game. 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 And I win. Victory. That's for you, Posty. All right! Yay, congratulations! Thank you! Thank Pulled you. it out! I gotta say, even even me untapping on that last turn, I thought I was dead. Yeah. I, I mean, things were dire. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I did not think there was, I had a chance in hell of winning that game. I got pretty lucky in there, uh, drawing that greater good along the way. I think if I didn't do that, then I'm just completely out. Yeah, you needed all the options that you could get at that point. I will say, uh, looking at Sed's deck list, this deck is awesome. It's mono blue wall zombies. It is not what I expected. Somewhere around like turn four <laughs> or five, he's playing a card and I'm like, shield wall? This what? is not what I thought it was gonna be at all. <laughs> it's a zombies on your commander. Yeah, very cool. His deck did work. It was very awesome. Absolutely. Uh, super fun always hanging out with Amy and Kenji. I think they are a little rivalry. I, I think my win in this game is largely, I I'll call this a Rachel Week style. Yeah. Win, which is, is like, just sit? like here's the radar. Bing, bing, here's me. <laughs> 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 
and then you're like, aha! Yeah. Got you. <laughs> if Amy and Katie don't have their spat, the I have time. no chance. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's definitely how I win. Most games is like, well, two people were scary before I was. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always like, don't forget about Rachel. Yeah. No. <laughs> but I'm always one of the scary ones. Rachel's so. just quietly drawing cards. <laughs> uh, reminder that the rest of the one mana crew, which is Ken and Derek, they will be on the next episode of Extra Turns. And that one's also so fun. Yeah, we figured splitting them up would be fun just because, you know, on their own content. And if you haven't checked out their content, uh, they are on YouTube. You just look up one more mana, they're gonna pop right up. They do a bunch of commander stuff. They have great content. Uh, but we figured like on their content, they're always together. So we had an opportunity to sort of split them up mm -hmm. and, and and spread it out over a couple of episodes, which we thought would be just a different look, which would be fun. But those guys are, are super great. Yeah. Think about commander in super interesting ways. So definitely check them out. I got to play with Ken and Derek. It was a ton of fun. Yeah, that's the next game. That's the next one. We'll see if coming. Rachel can do uh, the thing. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Rachel symbol from now yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> radar, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> She's flying playing, under the radar. Playing it cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Radar's like, I get, I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> Who flies above the radar? If you want to pick up any of the shield walls or <laughs> Murph's cool behind cards. camera, Murph's behind camera is going. What? What are you even talking about, Josh? What do you mean? It makes no sense. How is this radar? I'm editing this all out. And it's because you're doing like you're doing like the audio radar, like ra radar yeah. goes. Boop, that's not really. Boop, I guess that's sonar. That's not really what it looks like. <laughs> I'm just trying to visually represent. I know yeah. it's sound waves yeah. and stuff. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, back to our sponsors. <laughs> yeah. yeah, who are very important. We saw a ton of awesome cards in this game. If you want to build any of the decks or just pick up some of the tech that you saw along the way, grab yourself a greater good for those dire moments. Go to cardkingdom.com slash command. Card Kingdom is a great place to pick up all of the singles and sealed product that you're looking for this holiday season. You can get it for your friends who play magic. You can send links to uh, your friends and family who have no idea what you want this Christmas. Or you could pick up cards after the holiday if they don't get you the version that you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> card Kingdom has a huge selection of cards. You can always get the card you're looking for in the condition that you ordered it in. It's really important to me that uh, cards that I order are shipped with care yeah. because I'm so frustrated when I buy a card and it's in one condition and it shows up in another because it wasn't packaged correctly and it wasn't handled correctly in the mail. But Card Kingdom is super professional and they always make sure that the cards you order are the cards that show up on your doorstep. So, Buy your cards there uh, at cardkingdom.com slash command. You can support the show. Yeah. And uh, again, I want to say at this time of the year, getting stuff at the time that they mm -hmm. say they're going to get you the stuff, it's Cute. really important because of the holidays. So Card Kingdom excels at that. Uh, and of course, once you get the cards, you want to protect them. Also, another great holiday gift uh, or another great category of holiday gift is game accessories because the deck boxes, the sleeves, the play mats, the dice, the mm -hmm. wall scrolls that make your battlefield and your game room look amazing. That's all available at ultrapro.com slash command. That is the game accessories company that we trust our own collections to here at the command zone. Again, ultrapro.com slash command is a great place to go for holiday gifts and stuff like that. And then before we go here, we did want to remind you that Extra Turns had a new look. Yeah, yeah what it had sort of a, vin uh, and a vintage uh, eight bit or is it 16 bit? It's probably 16 bit. Old Some school of video game luck, uh, look. And we just wanted to know what you think about the new look, if you liked it. Um, this is something that Murph and the team have been working on for a while, and the show's probably gonna look like this for a little while. We're thinking about changing it for seasons or stuff like that, but you know, we just like to hear your opinion so we can uh, better deliver uh, the content that you enjoy. <laughs> Throw some comments down there. And if you really liked it, say thank you to Murph and the team. Yeah, they definitely worked really hard on it and are really proud of it, so. All right, all right everybody. Uh, and well, we'll see you for the next one when we get the rest of the One More Mana Squad out here. Yeah. Bye, guys. Thanks. Peace. Guys.